This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Entering Secrets, I'm going to show you what to do for your aging dog. Hello you guys. Welcome again back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Today's video is partly inspired by, yes, there was a birthday. And if you can probably guess from the hat that yes, it was mine. I'm not going to reveal the age I turned, but I'm going to show you a couple cards. Perhaps you get a sense. So this was one of the cards here. Yes. It's possible that there's a five and a zero attached to that. Um, but in the vein of me being a veterinarian, having a dog and cat YouTube channel, you'd probably not be surprised. I also got a number of animal cards. Um, here's one in particular that I quite liked. You can see it there. Dog blogs. He slept, he ate, he barked at stuff, he went for a walk, he pooped. Geez, it's like he's having my life. Um, most funny and very inspirational. Lewis here, who you guys probably know, is getting near the age of 13. Um, which, you know, when we sort of equate to dog years, it's somewhere between five to seven years, sort of people years for every year of dog years. So we, Lewis is sort of 70, 75 years of age. Um, meaning there's a number of normal aging related changes that are going on with him, which I would expect to be going on with your own dog. But fortunately, I've been able to avoid virtually most conventional medication and been able, been able to sort of naturally treat the bulk of the things that are happening with him. So I'm just gonna discuss some of the more common things and give you some specific tips, I think, if you've got your dog has similar issues. So to begin with, just expect everything to be slower. He's, you know, your dog has lived that number of years. They put lots of force on things such as their joints. Louis in particular, he's a big dog, was very active. So he's got just normal joint sort of wear and tear. You know, when he gets up, he gets up much slower. Ugh, takes him a while to get up. Um, and, you know, he walks around slowly. He can't do the runs how he used to. You know, we've, I've really toned his walks down. So instead of expecting him to go for a six mile run, he goes for a short, you know, one or one mile walk sort of thing. I mean, everything is much slower. Second thing too, in terms of in that vein, it's important that your older dog stays active. We want them to be moving. We, every time your dog moves, it actually, he, he or she is producing joint fluid will actually help his sort of creaky arthritic joints. We're also gonna help maintain their body weight by doing that. And thirdly, it makes a huge difference in terms of their overall mental health, the fact that they're still active, doing things that they enjoy doing. Um, but in helping them and sort of put less wear and tear, I want you to be helping them avoid certain things that may injure themselves. So Lewis can no longer jump, jump up, for instance. Um, so instead of you're forcing him to jump up, I'm either helping up. And I'll show you an example here. You know, if your dog is trying to get up, maybe, maybe not, he's trying to get up onto the couch. In the past, he would just jump up. So if I'm trying to get him into the back of the car, I'll just put his front feet up there like this, and then I'll just help him up. Right there. Really simple things like that. You're just trying to assist your dog, put far less force on them, just make it easy for them to still, to do what they want to do, be part of your life, but without hurting themselves. The next thing in terms of supplementing, most of our older dogs are going to have some degree of arthritis or degenerative joint disease. Just normal joint wear and tear. You have cartilage rubbing on cartilage, it wears down, leading to bone rubbing on bone. So you get this secondary pain and inflammation. For the easiest thing to deal with that is supplementing. Um, the three biggest ingredients, which I've talked about numerous times in the past, are glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM. Um, they just need to be in therapeutic levels. Um, so you're looking at glucosamine at 500 milligrams for 40 pounds of body weight daily, chondroitin, 250 milligrams for 40 pounds of body weight daily, and MSM, 500 milligrams for 40 pounds of body weight daily. Um, those are in my supplement. The ultimate canine health formula, which I have here, so you're looking at a dose for Lewis. He gets, you know, it's one scoop for 40 pounds of dog, so he gets two scoops. Once a day, I just mix it in to a combination of whatever food he happens to be eating that day. 
And it's the easiest way to be providing those therapeutic levels. It makes a huge difference for him. I mean, if he's on it, and I'll see within a week period of time, he's much more agile. He's moving much more, much easy. If he's been off the supplement for whatever reason, we've been traveling or away, there's a marked change. Skin related changes or hair coat related changes. Very commonly I'll see in our older pets. It may be a combination of them metabolizing nutrients differently or having different you know, nutritional requirements that they're not getting the essential fatty acids they need produce a nice healthy shiny hair coat which also be an indication of just their general overall health um, so if your dog has a pretty nice shiny hair coat you're probably feeding him correctly and or he's absorbing all those nutrients properly but if he's not or to help sort of boost or increase his essential fatty acid the component of his diet a real simple thing to do you know something like Lewis I want to have even shinier coat um, is to look at adding just adding in additional flax oil. So here it is here, super inexpensive. Um, I want you to look at fairly high doses. You're looking at adding, adding in about a tablespoon for 40 or 50 pounds of body weight daily. So it'd be adding in two tablespoons of flax. And you can just add that directly on your really dog. A really common food. organ system that I see change as our pets get older is they're not digesting their food as well. I mean, there may be more issues of vomiting, more issues of diarrhea, um, issues related to weight loss and or weight gain. Um, regardless, one of the most important things you can do that can benefit your dog is increasing the number of good bacteria uh, within their intestinal tract. So those are called probiotics. And a real simple and easy thing to do in terms of getting more probiotics within your dog is to look at something super easy. Here's just plain whole fat yogurt. Nothing else added to this, just 100% natural yogurt. With Lewis, I'll just go ahead, especially if I see him having bouts of vomiting or diarrhea, which occasionally happens after he's eaten things he shouldn't, I'll just start adding two tablespoons to his food daily. And you know, if you've got a dog, especially if they've, they've gotten older and they're having issues relating to their intestinal tract, go ahead and look at adding additional probiotics. Um, they have a number of other known health benefits in terms of um, not just relating to vomiting and diarrhea, um, in terms of overall immune system, we know the bulk of your immunity is now found in your intestinal tract. So improving your dog's uh, immune health, um, helping with their skin and skin related disorders. Um, we also see a link between anxiety or some of the nervous system disorders and you know what's going on within the probiotic or the bacterial count within their intestinal tract. There's links to weight loss, weight gain. Virtually most of the chronic diseases that we're aware of now they're finding some correlation with you know, probiotic levels and the bacteria count within the, the good bacteria within their your or your dog's intestinal tract. Some other sense changes. And so you would all, I would also expect as your dog ages, we're going to see a di diminishing loss of things such as eyesight, such as hearing. Um, Lewis is a good example in that he he himself he he can no longer hear at all. Um, you know, we'll call Lewis's name. I'll, you know, it happened about a year ago. I started calling his name. I wasn't sure. Is he, can he not quite hear? At first, I thought he was ignoring me. Then I started to raise my voice like, Lewis, come. And now, you know, we'll be standing here and I can yell his name. And, you know, he won't hear me. If he's looking at me, he has a sense I'm talking to me. But if I yell the word like, Lewis, come. You know, of course, as I said that, he moves his head. No, really, he really can't hear. And it's been about a year. So the big thing is we just adapted to that change. And um, there isn't anything in particular that we're going to do that's going to bring his hearing back. Um, it could be a combination of the small bones within the inner ear have fused. So he's no longer able to transmit sound. Um, but what it does mean adjusting our lifestyle. So visually, you know, he, he's got to take sign language or cues. And another big, huge thing is not starting them. So when he's in a sound asleep or in a deep, deep sleep, I mean, I'll just sort of wake him up by just sort of slowly rubbing his back and then he moves. But a sudden, you know, dot, you know, jab to, the, to his back end or something, whereas in the past he'd hear us walking, really startles him. So it's just being really thoughtful around that, knowing that he can't hear, being aware of cars, driving around, that he's not going to be in that way. Um, you're slightly adjusting your lifestyle. And it's been fine. I mean, he, he knows he's well loved and no, he can't hear us, but he can sure feel us and he likes being around and especially likes having the contact. Seeing, another real common change as your dog ages 
is you know, having diminishing eyesight. Uh, in particular, yeah, there's Gussie who wants to be part of the video. Of course, never when I want to film her. Uh, in particular, you can have these normal aging changes. So within the center of your dog's eye, so this surface here, that's called the cornea, and right in the very center of the eye, where the pupil is located, um, there's a thing called a lens that concentrates the light that comes through the cornea in through the anterior chamber, that first part of the eye, and that concentrates that light and what your dog's seeing to focus it on the back of the eye or the retina. Um, but normal aging changes is that his retina or his lens of the eye will actually take in inflammatory cells. It'll become somewhat cloudy and movies that call them in veterinary practice senile cataracts. So if I look into the center part of Lewis's eye and you can look into your dog's, center part of your dog's eye now, if it looks slightly white, he's probably got these senile cataracts. This, that's this normal aging change. One thought around helping dogs um, that have these changes is increasing the number of antioxidants within their diet. Um, so one way is looking at things that are such are in my supplement, you know, vitamin E, vitamin C, selenium. And these are um, supplementary antioxidants. Then you can look at you know specific supplements. There's one called Ocuclo RX, developed by a veterinary ophthalmologist. It's got a, a range of 12 different, primarily antioxidants, that have, has proven to be pretty helpful for these dogs that have uh, these cataracts. And lastly, then you, or else you can just look at adding a, a bioflavonoid combination, which is a combination of these antioxidants and other specific nutrients that are found in the the peels of orange peel, for instance, or the peel of the apple peel. I mean, those are the other specific uh, supplements that we know are beneficial to stop inflammatory changes, such as we're seeing within cataracts. So there's one here. This is just a citrus bioflavonoid combination, um, and it include, includes things such as e, EGCG, it's a, the specific flavonoid found in green tea. Um, Keratin, the flavonoid found in apple, etc. Brain changes. Um, some people may wonder if I've got some of that going on if they're looking at this hat. I think my brain's doing okay, although I do feel at times my memory isn't sort of functioning the way it once used to. It takes me forever to recall certain names. But that being said, it's an, uh, just another organ of our body, of your dog's body. And it's aging too. I mean, so it's maybe it was functioning at sort of Lewis's peak when he was five years old. Now that he's 13, it's not working quite the same way it once did. Although he seems pretty sharp. But one of the, the easiest things too in terms of help your dog if you've got some cognitive changes. You know, for instance, say your dog so behaviorally isn't quite the way they once were. Maybe they've got you know, increased anxiety where they're just forever, you know, any little bit of thunder will set them off and they're trembling and shaking or chewing to get out of a room, for instance. Is, you know, they've had, those are just aging changes along with their brain. Um, in terms of sort of natural ways to treat that, one big thing, you can look at specific antioxidants that we know will cross something called the blood-brain barrier and get into the brain and actually help sort of deal with some of those inflammatory aging changes that are happening within your dog's brain. Um, the one, there's one antioxidant in particular that I have here. It's called alpha-lipoic acid. So the last thing I want to discuss and can equate to all of this, may it should have, may it should have been the first point, is specifically looking at your dog's diet and look at eliminating some stuff that are within that diet that are specifically affecting their health. Um, you can also look at the same thing within your own diet. So in particular, we know the majority of our dogs are fed, you know, primarily this kibble, which is what's here, right? I mean, it, it's primarily carbohydrate. I mean, the carb is what actually helps it form into this kibble shape. Um, virtually no moisture moderate amounts of protein, moderate amounts of fat. Um, where we know our dogs, I mean, the canines have descended from wolves, um, where primarily I mean, they function on a primary, an animal protein diet, which had some carbohydrates, um, but primarily it was meat protein. And it was raw too, so it was in an undigested form. What I've seen, what I saw in veterinary practice and what I've seen with a number of different dog owners is when they've made the switch to start transitioning off of less kibble, um, more of a natural diet, they've seen much healthier animals. And I, 
I'm trying to do less with Lewis. So an example here would be instead of him, you know, feeding just kibble this twice a day, where if we have stew, he gets some stew. Or even better yet, I'm trying to at least give him once a, once a week some type of raw diet. So instead of the kibble, I mean, here's something here. I mean, here's just part of a femur bone with still animal protein on it, which he really enjoys. And so not only is it, and is it being beneficial for him in terms of um, altering his diet, giving him specific nutrients, he probably can really benefit now as he's got getting older. Also just that natural chewing on that big bone, really helpful for minimize, keeping the tartar off his teeth and minimizing the need for him to have a you guys dental. Just look already. at all those different suggestions that I made. Obviously depends on what is specifically affecting your dog now. I mean, even if you take two or three of those, you've got an older dog. I know some of those are no question beneficial. I'm not so great about necessarily doing it with my own dog, but I know that, you know, when I'm regularly supplement him for arthritis, he's much happier. He's moving much better. Um, when I look at adding in things, you know, when I started to add the, the probiotics, when adding yogurt into his diet, I've seen him be, one, he seems to be healthier in terms of overall, and that's my own sense with myself. Um, do a, I'm seeing a positive response from him in such an easy, simple way. Or looking at adding in, well, I've gone ahead and added in flax oil. I do notice a difference with this coat. Thank you for watching this edition of NRE Secrets. What I want you to do now is first click that link in the box above. That can subscribe to my channel. Then you can go ahead, click that link in the box below. I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.